What we'd like to present today is some work that we've been doing with a, an international team of colleagues on research data management and libraries. And it's set in a context of research data management becoming um, an increasingly accepted uh, role for academic libraries and also um, embedded or starting to become embedded within research data services provided by uh, libraries alongside other collaborators in the institution. So what we'd like to do today is present some of the research that we've been doing that looks at the way in which research data management services are maturing and the extent to which this contributes to the transformation of academic libraries. The research we're presenting here relates to, uh, well, started off very early on with different members of the team uh, producing different forms of research in various different countries. And then in 2014, we came together and did an international survey, uh, which has since been published. And this we followed up in 2018, repeating many of the same questions, but also streamlining and adapting the survey to bring it more up to date. But crucially, we're enabled to make a number of comparisons between 2014 and 2018, and that's what I'd like to present uh, today. So this is unpublished work so far, and so we're still working on much of the interpretation of it, and I'd be very interested in your, in your comments. So what we focused on in this research then was trying to work out where libraries were in terms of the development of policy and the development of services. We looked in particular at the development of partnerships and collaborations and also how libraries are responding to the RDM challenge in terms of the roles and structures that they are putting in place. We also wanted to find out what libraries perceive to be the current drivers for RDM and also the challenges that they were facing and what all of this means for the transformation of libraries and in terms of maturity. So what I'd like to do today is focus on the 2018 data but draw comparisons with what we saw in 2014 um, and hopefully this will give us an insight into the maturity as it, as it develops. So I'm going to present some of the data um, on the current situation and then I'm going to hand over to Andrew who's going to look at skills and, and roles and also at some of the interpretation of the data. So there's lots of tables here. I'm going to highlight what I regard as important but I hope making the slides available to you afterwards will be useful so you can look at the detail. So first of all, we had 209 responses to our survey from the different countries involved. A really good response rate from a number of countries including Australia, um, Ireland, uh, New Zealand and a pretty good response rate from the UK and a lower response rate from other countries. And we need to bear that in mind particularly when we're doing country specific. Uh, analysis. Just to give you uh, 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 the heads up on the main findings of the survey, first of all we saw very clearly that libraries are moving forward with regard to research data management. We can see progress in more or less every area. Advisory and support services though remain the key uh, most important services that libraries are providing as opposed to say technical and infrastructure services. The perception of what's important and what is a priority hasn't really shifted much in the time scale between 2014 and 2018, which we regard as, as interesting. But we do see libraries playing a key role in their institutions in the development of research data services. However, there is still a significant skills gap as perceived by, by libraries here, although libraries are adapting their structures to respond to the RDM uh, challenge. The key drivers are still funder mandates, as they're seen, but there are often comments from respondents that these, these mandates often lack teeth. Very often they're not monitored and there are no sanctions um, or very few sanctions if you don't comply. And so the lack of resources, but also still a lack of staff engagement, a lack of academic staff engagement are seen as the most uh, crucial barriers. So that's the, that's, those are the headlines. Let, now let's go through some of the data. Now, we asked in the previous survey and in this survey 
what the position was as far as policy development is concerned. And what we see is that at least in some countries, particularly Australia and the UK, we're seeing policies becoming now embedded in the institutions. And we've seen that progress between 2014 and 2018 very clearly. However, interestingly, there are a number of countries, particularly Canada and New Zealand, where there doesn't seem to be a common policy infrastructure in place, even though they are developing services. And we're, we're interested in that. We don't know quite how to explain it, but it could be that the services are being developed experimentally and then the policy will follow. But that's the opposite from what's happened in other countries. And so that is quite an interesting uh, position. Comparing the 2014 and 2018 data in terms of the maturity of services, we see pretty much in all areas libraries are making progress in terms of developing the services and describing services as now increasingly well developed in various different areas. These were the different services that the survey asked about. I think there are 26, but I can't, can't quite remember. They're quite a large number, so we broke down RDM into these different services. With essentially support services um, here, support and advisory services at this side, and more technical and infrastructure services at uh, this side. In, and in the vast majority of areas, in fact all except one, we see progress between 2014 and 2018. The priorities haven't changed that much actually, and if anything, the technical priorities have been slightly demoted, but it's marginal. So, it, that's quite interesting. The libraries are still seeing the agenda as essentially the same thing, even though they are making uh, progress in various different areas. As far as collaborations are concerned, an interesting position here. Nearly half libraries are collaborating with external organisations in order to deliver their research data management activities, but we see collaborations increasing in the UK but decreasing in Australia. And we think in Australia that's probably to do with the closure of ANDs, but it's interesting to try and think of explanations. Maybe more consortial activity, maybe JISC activity in this area, which is uh, maybe some outsourcing of services, which is um, prompting people to, to, to say that they're partnering with external organisations. Organisational structure was interesting, but it, what, one of the things that are interesting is there's no consistency, or rather there's a lot of variety in terms of how people are res responding in terms of roles and structures to the research data management challenge. And we put a number of possibilities in front of respondents, from just having a single person responsible for RDM through to a team responsible for RDM and a research support team, and then spreading RDM responsibility through the organisation. And there didn't seem to be much of a pattern in terms of how people are implementing RDM. But, interestingly, there is certainly a correlation between those that have a team focused on RDM and those with the most mature services. Um, now, I guess your common sense would tell you that was going to be the case if you have capacity to uh, develop a team, you're, they're going to develop more services. But that is certainly shown in the data that if you have a team focused on RDM delivery, you tend to have a better developed or more developed uh, services. And that came across relatively clearly, although there's still a lot of variation in the data. As far as skills um, are concerned, we see skills gaps in pretty much every area we worked, we, we, we asked about. Um, with um, significant areas like, for instance, data curation skills. So, and these haven't changed all that much between 2014 and 2018. There is a real consciousness of there still being skills gaps, even though people are telling us they're filling those skills gaps, both through a combination of um, uh, reskilling staff and new hires as well. The drivers, um, this was a free text. Uh, response. So we didn't sort of name particular drivers and so therefore carried out some content analysis on the responses that we received. Um, but pretty clearly, funder compliance is still seen as a major driver for RDM um, in, in all countries, uh, pretty much, although that does vary. But interestingly, the next one is this factor of 
trying to ensure the library remains relevant. So interesting, RDM is part of this agenda, very intentionally it seems, where libraries are trying to find a role for the future. They're adapting, they are transforming very intentionally. And we thought that was quite an interesting insight provided by, by the data. The challenges though, as, as I've said, focus on resources, skills and academic engagement. And that came across very clearly. Although, as I, sa I said at the beginning, that the role of the library in delivering research data services is now becoming more widely accepted and embedded, there are still significant challenges in this area. And in many institutions, it is still not a done deal, it, 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 at least in terms of expanding that role. And so libraries, we're very conscious, are still arguing the case and still negotiating over that territory in relation to RDS. So that's a presentation of some of the data. I'm now going to hand over to Andrew, who's going to present some of our interpretation. OK, so this goes maybe slightly beyond the data in that I've always thought that um, there's quite a complex agenda here of talking to researchers about the need to manage data effectively and the benefits to them personally. Then there's a, a more demanding thing that they might share data, even more demanding that they might make their data open. And a whole open science, open scholarship agenda, even pushing things further. So there's quite a complicated agenda there that, um, that is being pushed by various forces. I put funder compliance in much larger, larger arrow than perhaps the data we've got suggests, but I think there's lots of forces going on, uh, pushing the agenda, and again, lots of barriers as well, um, acting against the progression of this uh, agenda. To go back to something more founded in the data, though, um, I think there could be said to be three paradoxes around RDM that remain true. One is that we know that researchers need to manage their data more effectively, but actually the demand for research data service is still quite weak. So there's need but not demand. That's one of the paradoxes. The second paradox is that we know the main driver is compliance with what the funders say we should be doing, but actually is there much checking of compliance and is there much funding to support compliance? So there's still a paradox there too. And the third paradox is that libraries want to be involved. We've seen from the previous slides, it's all about what libraries say they're doing about research data management. They want to be involved, and it's part of partly justified from reinventing what the library is. But there's still a strong sense of a lack of skills, a lack of capability, a lack of credibility with um, academics, and also a resource gap. So I think there still remain, maybe those paradoxes have been around for quite a long time, but I think those still remain. In the earlier work we did, um, we developed a kind of a maturity model. I personally recoil quite a lot from that idea of saying there's a maturity model because it implies a one size fits all, everybody's on the same development path, um, and actually one of the the, the big kind of um, common understandings of the community when research data management was emerging as agenda seemed to be, it's not going to be the same for everybody. So I've always been a little bit against the idea of maturity model, but actually our data does kind of suggest that. So for example, if you compare the Russell Group institutions data with that of the non-Russell Group institutions in the UK, and I know that's underestimating the difference potentially. The only real difference is that there's more saturation in the kind of very common research data services, not that um, more advanced services are being developed by the, the more uh, research intensive institutions. So maybe a maturity model does work and maybe it is quite a common across the sector for whatever reason. So um, this is our revised maturity model so what it basically says is, well, at level 
zero, we're just really thinking about research data management. We might be doing audits and surveys to work out what data have we got, what are uh, researchers' attitudes. Then level one, we're labelling compliance at the moment. So it, it's about the obvious services you could easily supply, like training in research data management, advisory services. You've probably got a formal policy in place. Um, and then maybe specific individuals are given the RDM role, or there's dispersed responsibility across many teams. And it's more about translating, on the right-hand side, translating existing skills. So that's a kind of compliance level. I think we're more tending towards to get to this kind of stewardship level, we've labelled it, where you've got a data repository, you've got some support of technical services, you've got a dedicated RDM team to some extent, and you've gone to the extent of reskilling existing staff. So that's maybe the stewardship level that many institutions in the UK are at. And then this transformation so our paper is all about is RDM transformational for for libraries. So this transformation level, where you might be doing things like data analysis and data visualization, doing more things around data integrity and reproducibility, where I think it's pushing libraries to have very different types of skills than they've had in the past, and maybe things like embedded roles that we do not see, and maybe that's maybe that's on our path that we're going to reach, and maybe it's not something we're really going to aspire to, because kind of my analysis of, or our analysis of the determinants of what services have emerged seem to be driven by three things, really. One is, are we doing something pretty similar already? Have we done it for years? How can we just translate existing um, skills to this new uh, context? That seems to be often why we're delivering a particular service. Does it require not much skill resource? Uh, and there's a few cases, and particularly data management planning, where I feel that's beyond what libraries have typically done, but um, there's immediate demand evident. But in general, what seems to be driving the service that people are, are supplying is doing familiar things in a slightly different context, things that don't demand too much resources, and a few real changes where there's a very strong sense of immediate demand. So I think our underlying question was always going to be, it was always, has research data management transformed academic libraries in terms of our skill set? Have we really acquired a whole new skill set? Have we changed fundamentally organisationally? Have our, has our notion of what a library is and a collection is, has that really changed? And the answer seems to be, in my opinion, maybe this is just my opinion, um, it's no, we haven't transformed. There is the potential alongside things like text and data mining, uh, changes in other aspects of scholarship, uh, scientometrics, all the scholarly communications area, maybe there's a potential for transformation, but I think RDM on its own hasn't really transformed academic libraries. 